Hi, this is Mark Birch, and in this second video examining the representation of Macbeth's bravery, I'll consider how Shakespeare represents the undermining of Macbeth's bravery and the transformation into hubristic bravery. Act 1, Scene 3 provides the first example of Macbeth's fear. He claims that the fort of regicide doth unfix my hair and make my seated heart knock at my ribs. As with other points in the play, Macbeth can be brave in the face of a physical adversary, but is fearful when dealing with moral or supernatural threat. It's worth comparing this with his response to Banquo's ghost when he claims, take any shape but that and my firm nerves shall never tremble. Act 1, Scene 7 begins with Macbeth's consideration of killing Duncan. The frequent use of euphemism may represent his fear of committing regicide. His avoidance of direct reference to murder is suggestive of a lack of bravery within the context of this worst of crimes. Lady Macbeth exploits Macbeth's identification with bravery in order to manipulate him. Was the hope drunk wherein you dressed yourself? And this attack on Macbeth's bravery and commitment undermines his resolve to not kill Duncan. Macbeth compares his own bravery unfavourably to that of his wife. Bring forth men children only, for thy undaunted metal should compose nothing but males. His own metal had been daunted by the prospect of killing Duncan. The stick of fear in Act 2, Scene 2 may again represent Macbeth's fear. A series of short utterances fracturing the iambic pentameter convey uncertainty and tension as he confronts the horror of the crime that he's committed. Following the murder, Macbeth's bravery appears to be undone. He reports hearing voices and Lady Macbeth recognises that he's mentally affected by his actions. She states, why worthy fane, you do unbend your noble strength to think so brain sickly of things. Macbeth explicitly states that he's too afraid to return to the scene of the crime. I'm afraid to think what I have done. Look on it again, I dare not. Lady Macbeth goes on to compare her bravery to Macbeth's. My hands are of your colour, but I shame to wear a heart so white. The colour symbolism represents Macbeth as cowardly. Having now attained the crown, Macbeth fears Banquo. In his soliloquy in Act 3, Scene 1, Macbeth refers to his fear of Banquo three times in eight lines. It could be argued that he exhibits cowardice in having Banquo killed as a result of these fears. And that's also paralleled in his command to have Macduff's family and servants killed as a result of a similar fear born of prophecy. In Act 3, Scene 2, Macbeth admits, Oh, full of scorpions is my mind, dear wife. His fear in Banquo and Fleance is such that he's being mentally tormented or stung by metaphorical scorpions. When Macbeth learns of Fleance's escape in Act 3, Scene 4, he admits to being cabined, cribbed, confined, bound into saucy doubts and fears. He accepts that his fears imprison him. Macbeth's apparent fear at the sight of Banquo's ghost prompts Lady Macbeth to mock his masculinity. She states all oh, these flaws and starts, impostors to true fear, would well become a woman's story at a winter's fire authorised by her grandam. In Act 4, Scene 1, the witch's apparitions instil a sense of hubris in Macbeth. He believes himself to be invulnerable, and therefore fear is meaningless. He's equipped with a false and misplaced bravery, as evidenced in Act 5, Scene 3, when he dismissively states, Till Burnham Wood removed to Dunsinane, I cannot taint with fear. Upon hearing the screams following the death of his wife, Macbeth reveals, I've almost forgot the taste of fears. The witch's prophecies have clearly manipulated him into a reckless and fearless state. However, when Macbeth realises that he's been manipulated and that those things that he believed impossible are coming true, he still acts bravely. At least we'll die with harness on our back. He refuses to flee his castle and accept death, stating, bear like I must fight the course. And why should I play the Roman fool and die on mine own sword? Whilst I see lives, the gashes do better upon them. As Macbeth prepares to die, he exhibits the bravery that characterised him at the beginning of the play. In many ways, he resembles the previous Fane of Cawdor, when Malcolm described the traitor's attitude as nothing in his life became him like the leaving of it. So, ultimately, Shakespeare presents the audience with three stages of Macbeth's bravery. Conventional bravery, fighting the king's enemies, fear undermining bravery, confronting his murder of the king, and reckless hubristic bravery, unchecked by any fear, created by the prophecies delivered in Act 4, Scene 1. 
So to explore any of these ideas in detail, please take a look at my scene by scene close analysis and take care. Cheers. Bye. Created using Powtoon.